as far as paying my dues and everything, I think definitely I should be in the league. As far as staying clean and, and having a good report with the, the media or the public, I did all of that. You know, it's just now, you know, when is the big payday going to come? You know, that's just, you know, really what I'm waiting for. But I think it's going to happen. You know, I definitely think it's going to happen. The main event. Listen, no street ball story can be told without the man himself. Some call him the main inspiration behind the whole And One mixtape tours. The founders of And One saw him play and just knew the world needed to see it as well. All the young basketball players out there that aren't familiar with street ball, please go do your homework. We live in a time where many things are orchestrated, planted, faked, cheated, and machine created. Street ball was different. One of the most organic things the world has ever seen. One of the main reasons is because there was passion deeply rooted in its core, created by young guys that didn't have any other outlets. In those times, most lower class neighborhoods didn't have things like indoor gyms and AAU basketballs happening year round. That or your parents couldn't afford to send you to any of those camps in the summer. For these kids, the streets was all we had. Once you had a couple dollars to get a drink or something to eat, you could stay out there all day and night. Streetball will never die. The popularity of it did, but there will always be the streets. And when you talk about it, you have to talk about Wally Dixon, born February 7th, 1974. A guy that actually had a legit shot, but the NBA just wasn't in his cards. Salute to official Dis TV, Raw and Uncut, and about millions who's been rocking with the channel for a minute for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth, Ash Get it, man. Stunt number one, the Scarlet Fight. Dixon attended Linden High School and was a Street and Smith All-American in 91-92. During high school, Dixon was known locally in the Newark Star Ledger as the common attraction based on his skills and aerial flair. At Rucker Park in the early 90s, Dixon completed a 360 dunk that stunned the crowd. It earned him the name, the main event, as he began to attract a huge following to the Rucker Games. He also is his high school's all-time leading scorer and won the Reebok National Slam Dunk Contest. He was definitely on his way. After high school, he decided to attend Rutgers University and play for the Scarlet Knights. Now, if you know anything about street ballers, you know how good this opportunity was for him. Rutgers were in the Big East and constantly on TV, playing schools like UConn, Syracuse, and Villanova. He played a lone season there from 93-94, 26 games, and averaged 9 points per game, shot in the low 30s from the field, and 38% from 3, also 69% from the free throw line, and didn't return for a second season in order to pursue a more lucrative route on the N1 mixtape tour. And that's where I think he made a turn for the worse. N1 was on the rise and on its way to becoming the hottest thing on VHS. That decision to leave may have seen a lot more justified in those times, especially when N one's handing you a lucrative contract and a chance to be a part of something as special as those tours were. But man, I can't help but think what would have been had he stayed in school. Nine points per game as a freshman in the Big East was really solid. By his third year, he may have had a real shot. Not a good move in hindsight. Stunt number two, growth spurt, or lack thereof. Main event was six foot four, built like a tank and jumped out the gym. I haven't seen many guys that get up like he did, could catch an alley-oop from anywhere and had the personality to go with it. But his game was more suited to play in the front court more than anything. Had he grew to be about six, eight or above, he would have definitely been in the league and his story would be a lot different. 6'10", and he'd be Blake Griffin with heart and tenacity. In the 1994 draft, there weren't many guys being drafted his size with that skill set. I mean, Jason Kidd was the same size as a point guard. The league was looking for the next MJ at the time, especially off the ball. For the game he had, and one may have simply been his best choice other than returning to school. Dixon would continue playing street ball locally until 1999, when the founders decided to put together an event with the help of street ballers like Main Event and turn that into what would be the first volume of the N1 mixtapes. At this point, Dixon was 25 years old. 
passed his college prime, and also passed his window for the NBA in most cases. But all was not bad. And one was a huge success from 2000 to 2007, and main event was one of the main reasons. His high-flying dunks, passion, and personality were well received and he managed to create a substantial following and earned a pretty good living doing what he loved. Stunt number three, how much is faith really worth? Now, let's talk, let's really talk. The word faith, what does that mean to you? How far should we take it? How long should we believe? People say that you should keep believing in your dreams, have faith in your future opportunities, but they never tell you what's on the other side of that thin line. You also have to realize when it's just not gonna happen and switch gears early enough into your other endeavors to give yourself a chance at the life you'd like to live. In main event's case, he was still confident an NBA contract would come to him at 25, 26 years old. Maybe in today's day, where there's tons of back doors into the NBA, but in his days, if you weren't drafted or lucky, you pretty much weren't getting in, especially at almost 30 years old. Instead, he should have been 100% focused on and one and how to further the opportunity he was given and assuring the success of the tours and in the future, creating his own league of street ballers, which he did try, but it wasn't a success. And one was a blessing for those street ball guys, but they all were too concerned with making it to the league instead of realizing what they had. They had the eyes of everyone and fumbled it. In his post and one mixtape tour life, Dixon has embarked on several basketball related projects. Ball for Real, a street ball tour similar in nature to N1, was co created by Main Event and a handful of other former N1 players. It started in 2007, but after less than a year and a half, it disbanded due to lack of revenue and media support. All in all, Main Event was another legend in the grand scheme of basketball and a pillar in the street ball community for sure. Salute to him, man. He didn't make the NBA, but his name will still live on past his life as well. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. I'm out.